Hi, I'm Chaz Kirchhoff, and I'm Assistant Curator of European Sculpture and Decorative Arts at the Detroit Institute of Arts, and this is my husband, Shane. Like many of you, we've been at home for the last few weeks under the stay-at-home order in response to COVID-19. And while we were at home looking through the DIA's online collection, we were inspired by jean Simeon Chardin's still life painted around 1732 to share one of our favorite recipes with you, which is a recipe that involves mostly simple ingredients that many of you may have in your own homes. Hi, I'm Shane Hamilton, as she introduced, uh, I'm her husband. I am a chef currently affiliated with San Morello restaurant inside of the Shinola Hotel. And when approached about this project um, by my wife, I was looking at pictures and arts together, and this one stuck out to me because of its simplicity. It's got a nice crock pot here. Uh, we've got a nice butter crock for melting butter. Uh, three single eggs that are laid out on the table. Um, a pepper grinder and also a scallion that's just laid out there. So when I looked at this picture, the first thing that came to my mind was a hollandaise sauce. Um, it's one of our favorites. And um, yeah, it's kind of where I went. A lot of the ingredients are right there in this picture. It's very simple. but uh, So that's why it struck me and why we decided we wanted to do a asparagus with hollandaise sauce and a poached egg to go with this because basically all the stuff you need to do this recipe is in this picture. And as I've learned from Shane um, over the years being married to a chef, um, hollandaise sauce is one of these mother sauces of French cooking. And I think one of the things that's really interesting about Chardin's work is he really celebrates sort of the, the simplicity of the ingredients and implements that are central to French cooking. Chardin was painting in the 1700s in France, and his work really is sort of surprising to us as having come out of that context, that time and place. Because when we think of 18th century France, we frequently think of a style called the Rococo. This is a style that was very ornate and luxurious. It was associated with monarchs like Louis XIV. When we think of Rococo artwork, we think of light colors, lots of pastels. We think of, of ornate curvilinear forms. We think of lots of gold. And those types of artworks, those Rococo artworks, are really displayed widely in the DIA's fashionable living galleries, which is actually also where the Chardin is installed. But Chardin was a little bit different, and he was born in 1699. He was actually not from a family of artists, but was the son of a cabinet maker. And he worked primarily in what we call genre scenes, or scenes of everyday life, and still lifes, or scenes mostly of inanimate objects. And he was inspired by the Dutch still life and genre painters of the 17th century. So he was looking back about 100 years and he was reviving these 17th century Dutch works for an 18th century French audience. So he really stood apart from the other artists working during his time. And as Shane mentioned, the still life from around 1732 is surprisingly simple. It has very few elements, a few eggs, a scallion, a pepper mill or spice box, a pot. Um, but it's really sort of meditative and beautiful in its simplicity. One of my favorite parts of this painting is the representation of light. It has this beautiful sort of diffuse golden light. It almost is as if it was painted during the early morning or maybe in the late afternoon. To me, it almost resonates as an image that, that conjures ideas of kind of a lazy Sunday brunch. So I think in that sense, it really is perfect to pair with one of our favorite recipes, which is hollandaise and a poached egg. And we're gonna be showing you hollandaise with asparagus, but for those of you who may be missing those Sunday brunches, um, you can similarly pair this mother sauce with something like eggs Benedict or eggs Florentine and kind of recreate those experiences in your own home. So let's get cooking. Good. Shane, making asparagus, step one. I uh, just wanted to go over a few things that I've got started here to make things easier on our end. Uh, we've got some nice asparagus here, some eggs, some butter, some salt, some pepper, a little bit of white wine, a little bit of paprika, and some lemon. You want to trim your asparagus. It's very woody, kind of like a twig. You don't want to eat the bottom. You always want to cut that bottom section off. So really, it's just a nice, simple cut there. That's garbage. We're good to go. Uh, we want to get a pot of water boiling, a nice gentle roll is good. 
Um, I've got the water already heated up. We're gonna add a little salt to it. Always add a little salt. And we're gonna drop our asparagus right in. Get them all nice and covered. Um, this is just a like blanch. So basically what we're doing is we're just uh, flash cooking these to kind of soften them up and get them more prepared for the eating. Um, brings out the nice color in the asparagus as you blanch it as well, you'll notice. They get nice and bright green. It's kind of how you can tell when they're finished. Um, when doing a asparagus with hollandaise, I always like to just do a simple blanch on the asparagus so that your flavor profile has got a lot of the hollandaise itself in with the asparagus. You're not getting any extra, you know, garlics or any kind of sauteed flavor in there with it. So just a few minutes is all you need on this stuff. You can kind of, you know, get one. I kind of, you know, feel it. And then these are getting really close. So I'm gonna set them on a plate here so they are ready to go when we get further along our process. We're gonna set this off to the side and move along to some hollandaise. Starting off, I've got three eggs that I have separated. This is just the yolks. What I recommend is cracking your eggs into a little side dish and then separating them so you don't get them all mixed up. That way if you break a yolk, you can just start over from scratch and they're not all mixed in. So I've got my three yolks ready to go. I've got one stick of butter, which is a quarter pound. And I'm gonna just pop that in the microwave and get it melted. Real nice and easy thing there, you can just just melt it till it's all nice and liquefied. I like a nice flat sauce whisk. Uh, you can use any sort of whisk, any regular kitchen whisk is just fine. This is just my preferred tool for this. I like to take my eggs, I got the yolks, get them all mixed up real nice here in my little bowl. Um, you need to use a glass Pyrex or like a metal bowl for this so that you can cook your egg yolks in a double broil, just like you would boil chocolate if you're doing fondue of chocolate or something of that nature. Um, what we're aiming for here is a nice custard, kind of. It's not quite set all the way. Um, that's the final product of my egg yolks. I'm gonna check my butter. Butter is go. Turn my hot water down. Uh, I've got a pot of water over here that my bowl will just sit right in, like so. Um, you want the water just to the bottom of your bowl. Like I said, you can do this with a double boiler pot if you have one, um, metal, metal bowl or a Pyrex bowl like I'm using here. Since I'm not making very much, so I'd go with a small one. So we've got our yolks all nice and mixed. We want to take a little bit of our white wine and add to it doesn't take much, maybe like, I don't know, um, maybe a tablespoon tops. Probably not even quite that much, probably more like a couple tablespoons. Um, get it all nice and mixed. I like to sprinkle a tiny bit of salt in and crack a little bit of pepper in right off the bat. Just to have a little extra in there. Always season as you go, mix the difference. Grab a nice little towel here to my water bath. Um, pot is. I gotta bring it to a boil and then I turn it down where it's just barely rolling. So we're going to whisk our yolks here. I'm gonna get a little less heat on my water. Um, this is a very important and the hardest process of this entire dish. Um, you wanna take your time and do this just kind of slow. Um, if you cook your eggs too fast, you get scrambled eggs, which is no good. Um, so you want to slow heat, you know, your, your eggs are going to get warm, um, they're going to start bubbling, as you can see a little bit, you get little bubbles in there. And just kind of go, slow and steady wins the race here. And if your little bowl gets hot and you notice that you're starting to get clumps, you want to pull your whole bowl out of the, out of the heat. You can do that and mix it a little bit. This is the this is where it gets kind of tricky. It's not like hard, but you just gotta be very tedious and pay a lot of attention to it because we're right on the edge of it becoming 
custard-like substance. We're getting really close here. It's not quite as thick as I want it in this step because we're going to add that butter to it. Up here you can kind of see that we are pretty much kind of the consistency we're looking for. Our eggs are cooked. They're very custardy, still a little runny, which is okay. And this heat in this bowl is going to, you know, keep, keep them going a little bit. And it's not like, you know, a perfect just to see that we're looking for. It's just kind of eyeball. So as you can see here, we've got a nice smooth egg substance that we've made out of there. I'm gonna kick my pot off here. Alright, we've got step one of Hollandaise. The hard part is done. Alright, from here. We want to slowly whisk in our butter. This is kind of like an emulsification. Um, you're whisking the, the melted fat into this egg substance. And basically what you're doing is when you emulsify, you're putting air into this and it's making it nice and fluffy. So we're pretty good here. I'm gonna get a little, a little butter to start. You wanna go really, really slow with your butter. Make sure it's all thoroughly mixed before you add any more in. A little bit at a time. If you put too much butter in at once, you're gonna break your sauce and you're gonna have a greasy mess. Make sure you fully incorporate the butter each time you add a little. This is your at-home workout as well. Yes, you get lots <laughs> of arm workout in on the Hollandaise. Chefs have nice forearms, in case you didn't know. <laughs> now your hollandaise sauce, as it sits here, it always sits, it gets thicker as it sits. Um, so that's why I always try to make my hollandaise last when making recipes like this. Um, we're going as a step two because I feel like my hollandaise will hold better than a poached egg. So we're going to do the hollandaise first and then the poached egg. So we're about done with the base here. It's looking real nice. Last little bit of butter here. Good to go. Alright, so this is looking real nice. We've got a nice light yellow color. Um, it's pretty thick, but not like overly thick. It's still kind of coarse, it's what you're looking for. So then you see what I mean by it looks like kind of like a pudding. All right, so that's our base. Um, let's get a little flavor. We're gonna start. Um, I want to do like a lemon. Take half a lemon and juice it. If you don't have one of these handy dandy guys, I'm sorry. This is probably our most used kitchen utensil between me and my wife together. We both love it and use it for lots of cooking and mixology. It really is. It's the second one we've had. <laughs> um, I got a little more juice than I wanted out of that, but we don't have to use it all. I'm going to use about a tablespoon, not quite a tablespoon. And you're just going to want to do this to taste. Some people like more citrus, some people like less. Uh, me and Chaz are both heavy on the citrus, so um, we're gonna go a little, a little more than you might personally like in your holidays. Um, also, thing that I forgot to pull out of the fridge is Tabasco sauce. We've got ours in a nice bottle here, but I like to put just a tiny bit of Tabasco in here, just for a little. A little spice and it gets a little vinegar in there, kind of just, it just goes well with it. So now we've added lemon, we've added a little bit of the hot sauce of your choice. Um, we're going to put a little black pepper in here, I'm using a fresh cracked black pepper. And really, we're pretty much done here. Um, you can, you definitely add salt. Um, it needs a little bit of salt, but uh, depending on what kind of butter you use, whether you use salted butter or 
you know, uh, a nice cultured butter. You may have a little more flavor, a little more salt in there. So just, just do it to taste, just like you would anything else. Whatever you prefer is exactly how you can make this to fit your, fit your necessities. Um, I think that's tasting pretty good. And so we're pretty good here. This is a, our holiday is ready to go. This does not hold well. Uh, you don't want to make this and hold it in the refrigerator. If you, you want to make it, keep it out. Don't put it in the refrigerator. And when it's done, it's, you're pretty much done. Like you, you can't really, there's no good way to, to reuse your, your hollandaise. But that is our hollandaise sauce. Step three, poaching the egg. The reason we wanted to go over a poached egg is so that you folks at home could use this also recipe as like a Sunday brunch and do an eggs benedict or whatever you're choosing is. So we've taught you the hollandaise, we're going to teach you the poached egg, and I assume most of you can cut a English muffin or a toast square and toast it fine and add a piece of ham to it if you want. So your traditional benedict is an English muffin toasted, split in half with a slice of seared ham on each piece your poached egg, and then you take the whole thing and cover it in the hollandaise sauce. So there you go. Um, we're gonna kind of combine the two and just do asparagus with hollandaise and a poached egg so that in this recipe, you can use it two different ways to for two different meals in your family. Which also so, makes it vegetarian friendly. Yes, vegetarian <laughs> friendly. Um, so when you start a poached egg, first thing I always teach everybody is you wanna be a gentle crack, but you wanna crack your egg into a side dish that's not what you're gonna be cooking it in. Reason being is because a poached egg is very dependent on the egg being fully intact. Um, we don't want any, don't want a hole in our yolk. Oops. Nice little So we've got a, got a full egg here, so we're good to go. Um, I've got a pot of boiling water over here. I've put a little bit of salt in it, just this pinch. And we've poured just a tiny splash of vinegar, just regular white vinegar in there. And the reason we put a little bit of vinegar in our pot is because it helps to hold the egg whites together as they cook. Um, if you just drop the egg in, it kind of wants to fall apart before it gets cooked, so it kind of helps hold it all together. Um, I got a nice roll here. It's a little bit higher than I want. I'm gonna crank it down. I like to take my pot, give it a stir, so the water is kind of like a cyclone here. Nice spinning. From there, I drop my egg right in. see it do its thing and now we pretty much just kind of wait and watch keep our eyes on it um, we're looking to get the egg white solidified but the inside of the yolk is still nice and moist and loose where it'll run out when you crack it open there's multiple ways people do this this is my preferred method um, like I said, you might have another one some people like to bring up to boil drop the egg turn it off put a lid on the pot and let it set um, that way it works fine if that's what you're comfortable with. I'm just more comfortable this way. It's this way I was taught. Um, so, kind of use slotted spoon. Kind of stir a little bit here and there. Um, one thing I like to do when I kind of see that it's kind of getting set a little bit in here, scoop a little of the, the, the crud off the pot. It, it foams from the egg whites cooking in here. Kind of like when you boil an egg at home. If you've ever done that, you've seen it do that. Um, it pops out the egg. Just kind of scoop some of the stuff off so I can see my egg real nice. And I like to do mine by feel mostly. Um, you can stick your spoon in here, kind of pull your egg out. And then you can see that egg yolk, or the egg white is not quite set. It's getting really close. It's not quite there yet. Um, this is a very quick process, especially if you're only doing one. You can do more than one at a time if you'd like. Um, but I wouldn't do very many depending on the size of your pot. Um, like when I do this for a big restaurant, I get a big pot and do like 10 at a time. So um, it's really just, just kind of keeping your eye on this. Um, so we're still not quite set on that white. Slot the spoon and towel is your best friend for this project. And we're getting really close, really close. Shane knows that poached eggs are my favorite thing ever. <laughs> yes, I had to have one of my first chefs teach me how to poach an egg for Chaz because I was not good at it and she did not like my eggs. Um, so I'm a little better at this process than I used to be. Now they're way better than mine. <laughs> it's, it's 
kind of a tricky process, but it's really not as hard as everybody makes it out to be. I mean, it's really just kind of going slow and, and paying attention. So I'm going to get it out where we can see it. I want to touch it. You want it to be still soft, but you want all this white to be set. Um, one thing Chef always taught me, when you pull your egg out, set it on a rag like this. That way your water will run off your spoon and not get on your dish. You can kind of check it. Um, so you can see right here, we're just a little undercooked still, so I'm going to drop it right back in. Everything else is looking really good though. We're probably 30 seconds out. The egg will be good. I like a little dish for my egg so that I can pull it out. Put it right in a dish all by its lonesome. And then, like I said, you kind of rotate your spoon. Gets all that extra water off the bottom. I'm gonna flip it over and look, but yep. So you see how we, it's all white now. It's kind of a little opaque and clear when you can't, when it's not quite finished. So that's a nice post cake. You can see the, see the wiggle. It's still nice and soft in there. Let's shut our heat off here. Okay, so we have asparagus, we have hollandaise, and we have a poached egg, so now it's time to show you guys how we're gonna put it together. We'll be right back. Step four, the plating. We have got all of our stuff finished here. We are ready to get a good plate on all this. Um, got a scallion, also like you saw in the picture. We're gonna use this as our garnish, so I just like to get all of it for this. A nice little thin slice on your scallions. I kind of like to do mine under an angle just because I personally think they look prettier this way, but if you do you, however you desire, it's fine. You can use chives for this, green onions, whatever your fridge has in it during this time. Okay, so we've got some chives cut. We've got our asparagus on the plate ready to go. We've got our poached egg and we've got our hollandaise sauce. So, for you guys at home, if you make this hollandaise sauce and it's a little thick, or as it sets, it always gets thicker. So if you need to thin it out a little bit, you can take a hot tap of it out of your water, or out of your faucet, or a little bit of water out of your pot that you used to double broil, and thin it out a little bit. So it, it, it thickens as it sets, so. But what we want to do here is, I've lost my spoon, here it is. Spoon, spoon. All right, so we have got our, Asparagus laid out. Um, when I trim mine, as you see, I'm an anal chef, so I like to trim them all the same. We've got asparagus laid out on the plate. We are ready for hollandaise sauce scooped over all of this. Should I put the egg on top or should I put the egg on the hollandaise? What do you think, Jess? I would put the egg on the hollandaise, and that way it well, can see all the egg still. That's what I thought about. I, I mean, this out. is your one of your favorites, so I figured <laughs> I'd ask you what you prefer. All right, but we're going to hollandaise and then egg, so you can see the egg. Uh, when you do a Benedict, usually you do the hollandaise last, so it runs over all of your um, English muffins and everything. Like a little cloak, a so little like yellow to, cloak. I like to kind of get a nice drizzle just right over the center. Keep it looking real nice where it runs off. Kind of natural. I'm going to get a little extra on the play here. Something like that. And then with the poached egg, we can kind of go like this and get our egg on here just like we want. Maybe it'll fall. So we'll do a little. Ah. And I like to get a little scallion on top. And a little paprika just sprinkled all over the top of all this. And that is our asparagus with hollandaise and a poached egg. So I hope you guys uh, can try this at home and I hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks for uh, participating in this recipe with us. We hope you can take it from uh, our kitchen to yours and try this at home. And we would uh, also in this weird time of pandemic would like to give a big shout out to city market who is our our uh, preferred market at this moment in in the city of detroit uh there are many others but this one is connected to us very closely and we are trying to help support them as much as possible so thank them again for uh, keeping us stocked up with our necessities and foods 
Yeah, we're super, super grateful for all the grocery workers and the other essential workers who are out there. And we really look forward with excitement to seeing all of you back at the DIA sometime soon to enjoy some more art with us. Thanks so much. All right, we're done. We're going to eat the food now.